forbidden chapters of history. Giza Plateau in Egypt attracts tourists as a magnet. They come here only to have a rest, and they cannot resist the magic influence of the energy which comes from the ancient pyramids and penetrates the surroundings. Some get happy, some get alarmed, others start to reflect on the sense of life. No photo can show what people see here, and many visitors wonder who has created the pyramids and how. Though the guide is always ready to repeat what is written in any school book, the ordinary tourist still had great doubts that it was created with primitive tools and by Egyptians in the ancient times. No, the theory won't marry you with what you see indeed. That's how various stories come to life. Some believe that the pyramids were mounted by the people of legendary Atlantis or their descendants. Others consider that this is the handwork of newcomers from far planets. Historians reject these stories, and it's only curious that real facts come to support the point of view of the ordinary tourist who has doubted the truths from school textbook. The fact of the seven pyramids of Egypt so strongly differ from the others allows to assume that they were constructed by an ancient advanced civilization and long before the first pharaohs. Secrets of Seven Pyramids To find out the real history, we need to get the proof from the first hands. For example, from the texts which are still preserved on the stone walls of ancient palaces and temples of Egypt. For a long time, they were taken for ornamentation or mysterious spells. The situation has changed when the rosette stone covered with inscription in several languages was found. It was like a golden key which opened the door into the world of ancient texts. It's not an easy task to make a stone wall speak, but it is possible. We have to start speaking its own language, the language of inscriptions. And what shall we do when there are no inscriptions? The most interesting and mysterious pyramids have none. Can we learn something from a bare stone? Sure we do. In this case, we have only to shift to the language of stone. Both rough chips and soft surfaces can say that the stone was worked up, but also with what kind of tool. The tool is selected depending on the hardness of the breed. The transportation decided up to the size and weight of stone and the quality of masonry can tell about construction technology and the know-how of the constructors. So a stone can tell a lot. And that's how we can speak the language of Egyptian pyramids, the language of a stone. This is how an expedition was arranged of humanists and technicians, with scientific degrees and without. They were all united by a desire to understand the real facts instead of relying only on books and authorities. Historians believe that before the pyramids there had been mastabas, the tombs similar to a house which was a must for an Egyptian after his death. Pharaohs had their mastabs too. However, Josa, the founder of the Third Dynasty, for an unknown reason decided to put the constructions one on the another. That's how a step pyramid in Saqqara appeared. And this one is considered to be the very first Egyptian pyramid. It is constructed of small rough stones which were laid on a clay solution. It was a standard task for an ordinary constructor. And this goes in line with our idea of the primitive social level of ancient Egypt. Only 100 years after Jossa, it was Cheops who came to power and an extraordinary complex was erected on the Giza Plateau. The difference was enormous. No solution was used to mount neatly one by one the huge stony blocks. According to the measures, it is about 100 tons each. These are completely even surfaces of stones 
like granite and basalt, very hard rocks, enormous technological progress. It is possible within 100 years. We've witnessed similar progress in the 20th century, and the fantastic breakthrough has dramatically changed the pace of our civilization. In ancient Egypt, only pyramids construction underwent evident changes. Nothing else had been changed. The society had been primitive and so it remained. Have you ever tried to cut a file with a wooden knife? It's about the same as to use copper tool to work on granite or bezel. Historians want us to believe that ancient craftsmen did the same to make perfectly even surfaces of granite and bezel, and on a large scale. Nowadays, there are only a few of cranes in the world that can lift 200 tons. Is it possible that ancient Egyptians were moving enormous blocks of stones in hand, and also fixed one on the other? The picture seems logically impossible. However, while the constructors were capable to mount the blocks that high and work them accurately, they who came after to dismantle the pyramid could not carry the blocks that heavy and cut them to smaller parts. To ruin something, it's easier than to build. It's wrong to believe that if a child can assemble small wooden bricks into a pyramid, adult constructors will build a 50-story high pyramid as easily with their cubes weighting tens of tons. Simple arithmetic doesn't work here. However, it appears that Egyptians didn't even have 100 years for their technological breakthrough. It all came overnight. We can speak about 100 years ignoring the quality of the pyramids erected in the period from the reign of Djosa to that of Cheops. Here is a Saqqara pyramid of another pharaoh of the third dynasty. Not much remains of it now, but we can see that the masonry is the same as that of its step neighbor. The same we can see in the pyramid erected much later. Its author was the last but one pharaoh of the third dynasty. Here is the central part of a pyramid and it is surrounded by layers that are directed to the center from every side of it which makes a kind of inclined rouse very similar to Djosa pyramid. Over there the masonry is similar and is made very poorly. Here I can believe it was made at the reign of pharaohs. A crowd of people collected stones and put them on a solution. No effort was taken to make it beautiful, only to collect a big crowd of people to construct it. It is no need to be a construction expert to understand there was no progress here. And unexpectedly, the next pharaoh erects another pyramid in medium. It's only from afar that it looks ugly and untidy. If we come closer, we see it differently. Here the walls are made of huge blocks, cut up to the same standard. It's also seen well that blocks are laid very densely. If any doubts in the high quality of masonry still remain, it's enough to look at blocks over the holes in the walls. They are hanging with no support, clamped as domino pieces. But the most amazing is that the walls were leveled already after erection. It is impossible to polish manually the surfaces as big as a basketball playground. It's evident some other technologies were applied here. Not only the modern level, but even those of a much higher one. We must mention that it wasn't a horizontal, but a vertical surface that was polished. But inside the medium pyramid was even more surprising. Only at first sight the corridor seems carelessly and hastily cut through. 
and it's due to poor condition of walls and the ceiling. But if we look attentively at the joints, it is visible that the corridor is made very accurately of blocks with perfectly even sides. Would not there be these damages, natural or manual, it could compete the corridors of the Great Pyramid. The chamber at the foot resembles a cave only at first sight. This is not a cave at all. It had been originally very even. Now this can be seen by the seams and joints between the blocks. As the top layer had been ruined, its surface became rough. However, the joints are still even. Blocks are very carefully adjusted to each other. Hence the founders of Medium Pyramid, by some miracle, have risen to the level of Giza constructors. Out of a sudden, overnight. Historians believe Pharaoh Snorfro had erected two pyramids at once. The first one looks unfinished, as if the pharaoh was changing his plans in the course of construction, and as a result, it has the bent form. Plans were changed because pyramids decay started already during the constructions. But isn't it strange, after the thousands of years during which Egypt has gone through many earthquakes, the pyramid stays almost unchanged and it's preserved even better than the others. Even the lost part of the casing has not fallen down on its own, but was roughed off manually. Quality of masonry here is very good. Big blocks are densely adjusted to one another, and the external surface is very even. When you see it all, you start thinking the bent form has been conceived by builders from the very beginning, and there was a need to make it like this. But what for? This is not the only enigma that we've faced. Right above my head, there is the entry to the pyramid. It's not hidden, it's open. But why was it placed that high? It's not clear at all. What was the sense in making an open hole at the head like this? The answer must be searched beyond the everyday logic. However, everyday logic often comes to a deadlock when we speak about pyramids. Here, the neighbor of the bent pyramid, the red pyramid. Snowfro was again named as its author. This one is very much like the Giza Great Pyramid, both outside and inside. Perfectly flat walls, corridors and chambers. Enormous blocks of masonry. The high step arches, similar to overlapping of the big gallery in the Great Pyramid. And also like in the Great One, acoustic here is miraculous. In general, photos do not depict exactly the enormous construction which really suppresses. With these perfectly even sides. If any evolution can be seen, it's only starting with medium pyramid and within the limits of the same high-level building technology. Evolution has reached its highest point at Giza Plateau, close to modern Cairo. Within a short period of time, he has risen a group of buildings of miraculously high quality of construction that can make jealous any construction specialist. Pyramids big enough to room cathedrals inside were constructed with accuracy of modern tools. And it is quite probable that this kind of work for its constructors was an everyday job, not an outstanding deal. In the morning they come to mount thousands of heaviest blocks as precisely as the jeweler doses his work. And in the evening they left the construction site to have a rest. Even more doubt about the official version is caused by another dramatic breakthrough which occurred at the end of the 4th dynasty. This time it was made backwards. Within the lifetime of only one generation all the best constructors disappeared, as if they had all perished of an epidemical disease. And together with the constructors the technologies disappeared. The pyramids of pharaohs of the 5th and 6th dynasties are smaller in sizes, also are made much more carelessly. Today they look really poor, 
against primitive masonry of rough bricks on a clay solution. As if the 4th dynasty period never existed. Incredible, isn't it? Even 1000 years later, at the reign of the 12th dynasty technology stayed at the primitive level. Pyramids were built mostly of small stone and unburnt bricks. Logically, if one is capable to create something outstanding, it is not a problem for them to make something more simple. Historians maintain that simultaneously with the enormous pyramids for themselves, pharaohs of the 4th dynasty built smaller pyramids for their wives. The giants certainly eclipse the babies and not many people can see the quality of small ones is much more poor than that of their great neighbors. You get an impression that by the side of the masters there were the lazy students working. Is it possible that the pharaohs disliked their wives so much that they selected the worst constructors for their pyramids? However, up to the official version, together with the grand pyramids, pharaohs built such that looked not good at all. They were opened for study a century ago, but in regular editions they are not mentioned. Access of tourists to them is closed under the pretext of archaeological works. These are seven very small pyramids, all about 20 meters at the base. The very southern of them is situated right in the middle of the Nile, in the island of Elephantine, Aswan. Nothing of interest, only a small untidy mountain of rough stones which cannot be called blocks. The problem is, these seven pyramids are dated the same time when the Maidum pyramid was under construction already. The construction technologies of them are incomparable. But this is not all yet. In the days of the 4th dynasty, right near the Maidum pyramid, here appears a mastaba which was built out of simple unburnt clay bricks, not even of stone. It turns out that for some members of the royal family they made high-tech buildings and the others received primitive stuff. There are some more curious things. Pharaohs of the 4th dynasty were always at war with their neighbors and to protect their land from the attacks coming from the south they built a 20 kilometers long defensive wall in Aswan. Local mines were producing thousands of tons of granite for Giza pyramid at that time and the defensive wall was built of a simpler material rubber, the ground and unburnt clay bricks. However, the granite stone mines were quite nearby. And here is the paradox. Military victories and the wall construction at the time of pharaohs of 4th dynasty are depicted in historical documents. There is no mention of the giant pyramids construction. For example, arrival of the ships with the Lebanese cedar for construction of palace for Snofru was described as a magnificent event. And the same documents have no mention of the creation by the same pharaoh of two pyramids which should have glorified him through the centuries. Pharaohs had nothing to do with the construction of many pyramids, at least the facts prove it. And if the facts contradict the theory, it is necessary to change the theory, not the facts. Here's Maidum Pyramid, two pyramids in Dashur, and three more on the Giza Plateau. And another one is worth being added to this list, the Pyramid in Abu Roche. Now it is undressed up to its rocky bases. Though something still remains, and this is enough to see the same progressive methods of construction and the general elements, even in details. The pass was supposed to be wide as the others, but it is narrow and difficult to walk. And its height is such that you have to bend to go through. 
Some believe that the pyramid had been decayed. Others maintain it had never been built completely. Both wonder over the huge size of the internal chamber, but if we consider the masterpiece of Giza, they hardly had any doubts. Most likely, the pyramid had been completed, and only after someone disassembled it. At least the number of granite fragments near the pyramid speaks for that. So there are seven out of more than a hundred Egyptian pyramids that do not match with the general picture the historians have created. Without them, there would have been no contradictions or paradoxes. It means there was no technological breakthrough, only a gradual and slow development of stone primitive construction technologies. And its level thus would correspond to the social level of development in ancient Egypt. However, these seven pyramids shall be placed in a system this or other way. Nothing similar has been ever constructed after that, so we have to go backwards and search in the preceding ages. According to ancient Egyptian myths, the country was ruled by almighty gods, and according to Manifo, an ancient historian, it goes 10,000 years back. Here a question may be put to us. Do you really believe there were aliens or the land of Atlantis, which is mistaken in the very form of it? As belief works only with religion, research is based on doubts, not beliefs. Researcher shall have doubts even in the conventional dogmas and directives. He stems from facts, logics and common sense. And the facts prove that seven pyramids were built in the remote past. Traces of erosion on the Sphinx and trenches around it prove it was mounted in the time of heavy rains, at least 8,000 years ago. Geologists confirm this conclusion and historians challenge. Among the stels found in Egypt, there's also one that still preserves the words of Cheops, who speaks about the repairs of Sphinx made and names goddess Izid, the mistress of the Great Pyramid while Egyptologists have declared this tell a fake. Inside the Maidum pyramid there are logs which are dated between 3rd and 4th dynasties. However, it is evident they were installed into the finished construction. They cut big holes in the blocks for a log to go into and then fixed the logs with stones and solution. So logs appeared here after the pyramid had been already constructed. With only seven pyramids, as a proof, we cannot confirm there existed an ancient civilization of gods or of someone else. However, as we found out, there are many other traces that still exist in Egypt. The pharaoh's civilization appeared on the ruins of the other and more ancient civilization, which magnificently surpasses ours as far as the knowledge and technologies are concerned. And this is something worth of study. Perfectly even surface on a curve and its similar lengthways. How it could be done without modern tools, impossible to imagine. Originally, this was a building of another design which was altered to become a pyramid. Here is a small stone. Isn't it curious? It was sawn through. Here a trace has remained and sawn again. And here they cut it off. Here we can see a drilling, a tubular one. Primitive works done atop the smartest construction. They took it all and stored in the closet where an ordinary person have no access. Here it is still kept hidden as before. There are indeed a lot of traces of this ancient civilization in Egypt, which allows to learn more and more about it. 
but this may change history dramatically. We'll come back to it in our series.